Welcome to a tour of the great Cassavant organ here at Central Lutheran Church. I'm Peter Nicolmo, the lead pastor. This will be a behind the scenes look beyond the pipes and the instrument that you can see, also to the other places of the life of, the, of this instrument. The Cassavant came on service in 1963 as a landmark instrument. There are peers of this instrument, but it still is one of the significant moments in organ building in the United States. So enjoy this tour. It has blessed this congregation's worship and the community that has surrounded it for over 60 years. Here, housed within this historic sanctuary that is nearing its 100th birthday. So enjoy the tour. Hello, my name is Isaac Drews and I am the Director of Music here at Central Lutheran Church. Have you ever wondered what's going on behind the scenes in our organ? Today, we're gonna take a look at all the things you can't see from the pews in the sanctuary that make our beautiful 1963 Cassavant organ sing. If you haven't watched our Organ 101 video, you might do that first, as that's a great place to learn some organ basics. Here to be our guide is our wonderful organ technician, Russell Drager. Thanks, Isaac. As Isaac mentioned, my name is Russell, and I am the president of R.W. Drager & Company here in the Twin Cities, and I'm the caretaker of the organ here at Central Lutheran. Uh, today, I'd like to take you inside of the organ so you can see how the organ works while the organist plays. To access the center part of the organ, Russell climbs an extension ladder. Now he is entering the space between the wall behind the organ and the stained glass window it covers. It's in this space that he can climb up to the second level of the center section of the organ. So here we are in the great division of the organ, which is just a portion of the some 5,800 pipes that are in this organ in total. In organs, there are basically two kinds of pipes. Some behave like flutes, and these are like the ones you see on the front of the organ and have no moving parts. But others, which we call reed pipes, actually do have moving parts. These pipes behave like instruments you may have played when you were in grade school, like oboes or trumpets. And they actually have a small tongue that vibrates, which produces the sound. The side chambers are accessible from the hallway next to the side transept balconies. Here, we're on the left side of the room, entering the swell chamber. So here we are in the swell division uh, where pipes are very tightly arranged in a large wooden enclosure which you see kind of surrounding me here. And the reason for that is because on some sides of the enclosure there are shades which can move back and forth to control the volume of this division. And the shades are controlled by a motor which is actually below me right now. The organ blower room is located in the basement. To get there, we go through the old original boiler room, which you can see right here. The organ blower itself is located within this enclosure. So here we are in the blower room for the organ. Blowers became the dominant form by which organs got wind after alternating current was discovered and theorized in the early 20th century. When this blower is turned on, it feeds two large reservoirs, one here and one on the other side of the basement here, that behave like the organ's lungs and give it pressurized wind. 
With around 80 stops and parts spread all throughout the building, the CAS of Ant Oregon is a massively complicated machine with a lot more going on than meets the eye. When you listen to the organ, take a moment to appreciate all that is going on behind the scenes to make the music.